Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Uh, this week, uh, I had a painting that I did not like. Uh, one of my earlier paintings and I wanted to um, reuse the canvas. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you about how I did that. But I, I, I primed the canvas to, to cover everything else up and, and this is what I got. I knew the bottom of the canvas I wanted to be dark and the top part I wanted to be light so I used black and white to do it and that's what came out. So half of me is tempted to say, hey, this looks pretty cool by itself and leave it alone. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to accomplish today. So we'll, we'll get in there and do that. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, uh, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think might benefit from these fundamentals. I'm Kendall Stump and welcome to the Stump Project. Okay, so, uh, so reusing the canvas. Uh, it was an older painting that I, I did and I didn't really care for it. Um, you can see, I, you might be able to see some, some raised marks here. It's where some of the thick paint was. I tried to get it down as much as I could. Um, but for the most part, I figured that uh, those uh, those raised areas, those imperfections, were, would not hinder the the painting. Uh, but what I did was I laid my paint my, my canvas down flat, and I put a bunch of mineral spirits done on top of it, and I let it set for about an hour, and then I used I used um, a palette knife. And then just lightly went over it and just started scraping all the high points off and just no i didn't dig into it i didn't want to rip the canvas but i'm just trying to loosen up a lot of that paint and then and then i went with uh some some paper towels and just started um uh rubbing that with the uh, uh, circular motion just 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 rubbing all over the canvas and just breaking it all up and wiping off what i could and then once the canvas was dry I wiped everything off and, and once it was dry, obviously there's still paint on there, um, but it was relatively flat, relatively smooth. So uh, I, I took some uh, titanium white and I had some midnight black, this stuff here from, from the Bob Ross collection, and to use to, to prime and cover everything up. Now you don't want to use acrylics or gesso on top of oil paints for a couple of reasons. One, the, the modern day acrylics, uh, modern day gessos are um, acrylic based and, and this is essentially plastic. So you, you, you put it on and you're going to seal in the underlying paint and it's just not gonna stick. Uh, so, and eventually it'll start crumbling or peeling off and it's just not, you're not gonna have a present experience with it over time. Um, there is uh, oil ground that you can get um, to, to put on and, and to, to reprime your, your canvas. I did not have any of that. So I just used titanium white. I used more oil paint on top of my oil paint uh, to make that happen. Now, this is where the kind of the fun part happens, right? So I knew that the top part of my painting, I wanted to be light and the bottom part was going to be darker. Uh, Cause that's generally how we work, right? Um, Top to bottom, light to light to dark. Let me walk that back a little bit. The, the the sky will go from dark to light, and then from light to dark, uh, because we look at we look at the the canvas as uh, like a wedge, like this, where where the the wedge right here is is the horizon line, right, that you're looking at. So when you're looking at it like this, it's the farthest point away. So this part up here and this part down here are going to be the darkest because they're coming towards you. This being the sky, I wanted a lighter value altogether to start with um, than, than the ground. Now, here's where it got interesting. This black that I put on here, it's obviously it's nice. It's a nice black. But when you mix it with the white, the value isn't gray. The value is violet or purple. It's got a very red bias to it, obviously. Now... Why is this interesting? Because I can look at this and I can almost say, hey, I could leave this alone just the way that it is because it looks kind of cool. You, you can see how this maybe this is, this is land protruding out here. You can see a horizon line. 
right along this this dark ridge right here where either that's like land far out or maybe this is a peninsula of land right here and this is all water and then and then there's sky on an overcast day which would make it appear maybe um overexposed or possibly white i could potentially just leave this just the way that it is and it's kind of cool and i would be i would be fairly happy with this but that's not what we're going to do today we're going to put in a, a, a blue sky uh, some clouds coming across here, a little, little autumn scene, uh, um, some old trees here and look across the background on the horizon and, and then some, uh, some landscape coming forward, <clears throat> some, some brush land or whatever, what have you, Un, unprepared land coming forward. So I started by putting a whole layer of, of liquid down on my canvas. Uh, this stuff right here. Uh, if you've watched me for any point in time, uh, any amount of time at all, you, you'll know that uh, I, I like Liquin. It speeds up your your drying time uh, and it's it just makes for a better experience. So what I'm doing, I'm going to tone my canvas. I'm thinning out, I'm using raw umber, and I'm thinning it out with uh, a mixture of linseed oil and odorless mineral spirits. I'm just thinning this out. Uh, this my white isn't one hundred percent dry yet. And you're gonna you're gonna see this, and you really want it to be dry. But for this for this purpose and this demonstration, I think we're gonna be good. I think it's dry enough. So I'm, this is just a really really loose paint. I'm just getting it on here, and I'm gonna wipe down uh, what I don't what I don't need. What I what I find is helpful is when you you can apply this and then wipe away to kind of sketch out some of the areas that, that you want to uh, preserve or you want to add visual cues to to kind of help you remember what it is exactly that you're trying to do. Now, why am I toning my canvas? Uh, I'm toning my canvas to get rid of the white. Well, why did you put white on there in the first place? Uh, well, the, the, the white is kind of the grounding, the grounding color, but it, it's, uh, white can be, some artists can find this, the white to be intimidating. Like, well, I, I have all this white canvas, so how do I, what do we even start? Well, you can start by toning your canvas, just like this. Um, what I find is completely awesome is that this tone, this, this color that I'm putting on the canvas right now, it's going to help me later on as I put color on the canvas because it's going to help bring it all together. It's going to help you help me, you see me, you've had me, no, oh, come on. You've heard me use this word a lot, uh, homogenization or homogenize. Um, it, it, it brings it, this color is going to help bring it all together into one, uh, unified color temperature. So you can see right here, my, my paint, my white paint isn't 100% dry, uh, but that's okay. It's, it's, it'll be covered up. The rest of this is pretty good shape. I think I just got the paint a little bit thick right there when I put it on. We're going to take some off now and you see how it, it leaves the canvas kind of stained and that's really what you want. I'm just taking off a lot of this extra right here and just kind of just blending it out. Because I know this is going to be sky through here. All the way down to what well, we had the kind of the horizon in right there, right, right through here. Generally speaking, we like to break the horizon up into thirds, or the, the canvas into thirds. So you got here is a third, and then down here would be a third. Uh, some of the uh, old master uh, toneless painters uh, don't didn't always adhere to that. Uh, they sometimes broke it up uh, in in half, and that's not quite what we're going to do today, but. We're going to explore it, kind of see what happens. So, hopefully, see, we put a 
we put a, a, some, some tree and some shrubbery in here. We'll have our, our horizon in there. I want, uh, I want a hot spot probably like right through here. This. We'll use tools like this, like paper towels and stuff for texture. Probably gonna be a house or a building in here, which will want to have like a nice little hot spot. The blue that I'm going to use today is cerulean blue. Winsor Newton, cerulean blue. I'm gonna mix it with some titanium white. And let's, let's see. I, yeah, and it's going to mix with that raw umber that's on the canvas, which is going to really dull it down, which is perfectly fine. It's that's, what, that's what we have it on there. Well, we didn't have it on there to dull it down, but we had it on there to mix. And I'm just using uh, a flat, it's a larger flat. And you can use other brushes you don't have to um, use that. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna switch over to my, that's an, it's a, a painter's brush. It's like a one, one and a half inch, just a old scrumbly brush. And I'm just going to start applying some color. And again, I'm just mixing this on my palette. I'm just, a little bit of white, a little bit of the cerulean blue. You can see on my brush, it's not necessarily fully mixed. And I'm just going to let that play on the canvas. Getting a little bit more blue as I am, as I head to the edges. And right down here along the horizon line too, we'll make sure that we get some blue in there. This is gonna be that tree, remember? So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of, a whole lot of that in here. Uh, you do want some just because, uh, you know, should your branches wanna show something through there, well, you wanna be able to accommodate that. I'm just tapping on my brush, tapping my brush on the on the palette like this to pick up the paint. You get a nice uniform uh, nice uniform lift of paint from your palette. Rise and line right through there. I'm going to I want to take out some of these brush strokes. Uh, I'm going to go with this uh, number two natural hair brush, uh, hog's hair, I believe. Uh, it's super soft. It's from the Bob Ross collection, and I really really like it. Uh, but I'm just going to go more with the side of my brush, and I'm just going to fluff and lift the background, kind of just just getting rid of some of the brush strokes. Now, if you like brush the brush strokes in your painting and if that's just your style you want to leave them in obviously so we don't necessarily have to do this but uh, I'm just I'm doing this because I'm just trying to uh, blend the colors that are there uh, this is the the first layer this is the stuff that's probably the furthest away from you or from the viewer uh, so we want to and some pers distance perspective in it, and just kind of let it blend out and just let it uh, get soft. Just get, it, just let it get be soft. Cause that's, like I said, the furthest point away. So it's going to be the, the blurriest. Okay, I, I'm grabbing a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, and I'm putting it in with the uh, mixing it with a little bit of the titanium white just to dull it down just a little bit 
not too much I want it because there's still some some white on the canvas and some blue on the canvas uh, I want to put some some clouds in here let's we'll start here on the edge this is the fan brush and I'm just gonna let it dance across the across the canvas um, put a few strokes in wipe your brush off because look, you can see you're starting to pick up some of that residue that's already on the canvas and that's not what you're looking for See, I'm just wiping my brush off and you can see all the blues that are coming off in there. It's kind of graying it down. And now I'm going to make this a little bit darker through here. Just a little. I'm going to let it mix with the blue that's on the canvas already. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of raw umber. Okay, going back to my going back to my uh, larger brush here. I just want to blend out some of this stuff, especially as it gets closer to the horizon. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to make little circular strokes, like right through here. Really light, just super super light. And the reason why we're doing this is because the more you manipulate the paint on the canvas the more it kind of it mixes in with the paint that's underneath it so if you want a nice smooth transition you just keep keep manipulating that paint keep working on that paint now we're just working on the bottom edge Wiping off my brush, just like that. And now I'm gonna fill up the tops of these. So like super soft, super soft. You don't have to get quite as, as, as blended in or blurry as the background. Um, Cause these, are, these clouds here are just a little bit closer to you. Just wipe it off. And if you get wisps that come up, that's fine. You just take a really soft stroke just whisper to it. You don't have to use a fan brush if you don't want to. You can use you can use any brush, any brush at all. This this is uh, this is an old artist lofts brush. You can pick them up at any art supply store like like um, Michaels or AC Moore, who would have you. Uh, the the point of this is just to get color. On the canvas just to get color on the canvas we wanted this a little bit darker over here so I'm just adding a little bit more raw umber a little bit more of the blue cerulean blue and then we will we'll blend that here in just a little bit wiping off my brush in that blue on the skyline or the horizon line right there We'll pull it down into the painting because that's where we get the wispy bits and that's what helps soften the edges. 
Okay, now I am a proponent of uh, an even brighter highlight on the horizon, and that may change because of how we're going to be putting in uh, the landscape. But I'm just going to wipe a straight line right across here. I've used a brush in the past too, and I'll show you. I'll show you the benefits of using a brush. So this is a flat. Um, I put it in, uh, dipped in some uh, odorless mineral spirits, wiped it off, and there you go. I just removed paint from my painting. Just erased it. I'm just going to soften the edge just a little bit, just because I need it to be a highlight. I don't need it to be a, a, an actual line. So just softening that, just going back and forth, let the paint kind of fill in the gaps a little bit. Uh, you notice that I put some blue. I left some blue underneath it, and that is for when we uh, apply some of the stuff on the on the horizon. Um, it will allow it to uh, take on some of that color of the environment. And remember what I, I, I keep telling you guys: so the, the the further away things get from the viewer, the more that it tends to take on the color of the environment. In this case, the environment itself, or the sky, the air, uh, it it's this blue color so I want it to be able to pick up that the further that it goes back it demonstrates the uh, the air density okay I'm mixing a, a really dark color so I'm going I'm using Prussian blue in raw umber and I'm grabbing a little bit of sap green and so it's kind of a dark color but the where I well you'll see you'll see I'm, I'm using this bigger brush and I'm just pushing it up against the canvas here. Don't worry about the bottom edge so much. Don't worry about the bottom edge. We're looking for the top edge. Let it break that horizon line just a little bit. And we're putting the trees in way on, way up on the horizon. Adding a little bit of uh, yellow ochre as I come in because I want it to be darker on the edges. And you can see the bristles pushing your, your, your brush up against the canvas here. It creates those trees way off, way off in the, all that detail that it looks like you've spent so much time working on. It's all just a push of the brush. in with some of this color that's on the canvas. It's going to lighten it up a little bit. There, I need to go up just a little bit more, just up to that horizon line. Like I said, don't worry about the bottom part just yet. We're, we'll, we'll get there. The smaller brush is the same uh, artist loft brush that I was using before. Just started working in some additional colors now. Just some uh, scraping my my brush, almost like I'm wiping my my brush off on the canvas. Is it's it's picking up the the texture of the canvas. It's picking up. It's letting the paint break off of my off of my brush. It's applying detail where I'm scraping through some of the other paint. Just kind of blocking in some color where I want that. Don't overwork an area. Make a couple swipes and just kind of just stop. See what it's see what's going on. You want to you want to follow the the lay of the land. I have a highlight. It's going to come through here. Maybe 
see some highlights on these trees back here. Just touching, just letting some of that, not covering up all of the, all of the dark there. I'm just touching, just touching the canvas. Letting the paint come off where it wants to and that randomness will make sense. And I'm not I'm rinsing my brush off. I'm, like I said, I'm blocking in color, so I'm just going from one, one to the next and just letting it come off of my brush, tapping for texture and just seeing, just seeing what comes of it, quite honestly. That's the fun of, of painting spontaneously. You don't, you don't necessarily go at it with uh, any kind of preconceived idea. You just, you just go at it. And you take a break and you stop and you look. Putting down dark, I want a big copse of trees right through here, and they'll probably be in the foreground. So I want them to be a little bit darker. You don't have to cover up everything that's in the background either, because just let that stuff show through. It shows that depth. The, the further you get to the, the further way you get from, from the bottom of the canvas, the, the more towards the center you get, the further away you get from the viewer. So the, the more, the, the less of, of these kind of strokes that you want and the more of these horizontal strokes that you're going to want. As you put in splashes of color and then eventually things will kind of make themselves known to you on, on what it is that you are, are looking at. And, and then you can start to exploit those things. really loaded up my brush because I'm just going to come right in here just like this because I want that dark right there and I want some dark and look at all that detail that and I'll change the flavor by adding some like some raw sienna work on the values work I know that I've got some trees right there and then I want to uh, lighten this up as I go out I'm going to change the color in a minute on this on the edges of your painting you want to try and make sure that you can go up in a, some fashion like you don't want it, you want the viewer, viewer's eye to drop off. It's got some uh, burnt sienna on my brush, and I just want to add some red, some of that red tone. And just touching the canvas, just touch it. Touch it where you think those the sun's kissing the, that that tree. And what I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm building these things in layers. So I'll put a little bit of that and then I can put a little bit more of the dark on, on top of it so it doesn't look like it's just flat. It's just flat color there. I'm going to use, this is, this is a rigger brush and I'm just going to load this up with some paint, various colors, just as long as it's dark. Bring it all the way up or all the way down. 
let it mix with some of that paint that's on your canvas. I like to spin my brush, just spin it as it goes. It adds a life to, to those tree branches. Wipe off your brush if you get start picking up too much of that undercolor paint. Just take some time to, to look at your painting as you do this, just kind of decide where you want these things to be. These things don't, they're not, trees aren't sticks straight, they're twisted and gnarled and all the kinds of beautiful things that they are. Then once you've got that, you can go over some of them with just more. Either cover up part of the branches so that it looks like uh, you know, leaves are on top of them. It's not just a, uh, a, a uniform uh, layer of things. I just want this to be just a light spattering of leaves. I'm turning my brush, I'm, I'm kind of kicking it out onto the canvas, pushing it up just a little bit. But I'm turning my brush too, just so that it doesn't look like it's just one unified or one monotonous stroke. Here's a tree maybe darker. Brush strokes up, maybe showing some foliage or vegetation that's growing up here at the base of the tree. Just use your bristles to scrape some of that paint away. Let's start putting some highlights in. Working in stages. So working, you want the highlights, but you want a little bit darker highlights. Think of the values. Think of how these trees grow, the, the, the volume. <clears throat> how they maybe they wrap around just adding a little more color here we're going to adjust this color in just a moment to kind of show a little bit more a little more detail I'll show you how to do that so you just take a Take a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of just, just, just wad it up here. I want this, I want this wrinkly bit here on the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch or dab the canvas. So you're going to pull all that paint up. You can do that a couple of times uh, be because before you have to turn your paper towel because you will start transplanting paint, meaning I can take this I can come over here where there is no paint and I can put it down and I can start adding it elsewhere. So there's uh, some benefit to, to, doing, to doing that. You can see you're starting to put in some highlights, removing paint where maybe you didn't want paint. And then after a while you have to throw that paper towel away and come get another one. We'll do the same with this stuff back here. Just treat it like you would highlights. So don't go overboard with it. It works best if you have a light canvas underneath it. You know, some of this stuff down here, we had some dark.
Okay. And yeah, maybe we want like a little house cabin. We'll put in some dark right here. Maybe go a little bit lighter for the roof. Put a, a highlight. If your paint isn't sticking, you might have to thin it down just a little bit. A thin paint will stick to a thin paint every time. What I want to do, no, it's not quite the color that I want. I want it a little bit more gold and a little bit more yellow. I like the idea of more red. So I'm using some of the uh, burnt sienna and some white to get a pinky hue. I'm just kind of dabbing this area right through here. And then I can come with a paper towel and just kind of mop it up a little bit just to... We need to come back in and, and hit those with additional highlights anyway, but you got the idea. So again, just take your paper towel. I'm just gonna dab. We're gonna soften the brush strokes and and leave it more of a of a a blended hue. And this, I'm just using another artist loft brush, I'm mashing the bristles down on my on my palette so that you see I splay my bristles so that way when I touch the canvas it's just more of a random look and now when I'm, when I'm touching this area uh, for these brighter highlights I am not trying to cover great amounts of, of space I just want to cover a little bit just enough to insinuate that this thing is being kissed by, by the sunlight. Maybe there's some on that side of the tree. We're gonna, by putting brights on, on this side and then brights on this side, we're kind, of, we're kind of showing that tree trunk right there, showing it off a little bit. The more you dab, the more you work at an area, the more you're going to kind of blend it in. I think I just said that a little bit ago. The more you're going to blend it in with the area that's underneath it. So, so be careful as you do that. I mean, it, it really helps, especially if you have an area that you think is a little bit too bright. You can just start dabbing away at it and it'll, it'll take care of itself.
and pushing it up. This is on the horizon line. So things that are really, really far away. Just pushing it up a little bit, letting it break that horizon line and mix with the paint that's already on the canvas. All right, now let's try something a little fun. Let's work on, work on something down here. We're gonna start with this highlight right there. I'm gonna use a palette knife and I'm gonna use a lot of the colors that we've already got on, the, on our palette. Some white, some burnt sienna, some yellow. And I'm just getting a, a bead on the back of my knife right here. And I'm just going to imagine the sun kissing that area. Just scrape a little bit and just put it on and just lightly just drag it across, let it break. do what it wants to do right there. Careful if you pick up other pigment on your canvas. Just that, just like that. Okay, so. Got that highlighted bit in there. There's some area right back there. There's something there. Okay. Uh, now we can start working on some of this other stuff coming forward. Take some more uh, raw umber. I want to little, little, warm this up a little bit. Raw umber. Burnt sienna. We're gonna start with that. A little bit of, a little bit more sap green. And I'm just pushing up against the canvas right here. Just pushing it, just, just pushing up like this, letting the bristles bend. And it's creating these tufts of, of grass. Just in the, just in the foreground area. Creating this texture. Cover it all up. Don't cover it all up. I wouldn't recommend that. But now, as we start incorporating some more green, and this, like I said, I want it to be. I want it to be dark. But I'm using whatever paint is on my brush and I just want to get this texture. Let some of the dark of the canvas show through. I'm just after, I'm just after the texture at this moment. kind of let the land just let it play there 
one of the things that uh, you want to pay attention to is your your value play so your light on dark and light on dark so here we have this uh, this bright highlight and now we've got some of these pieces of vegetation that are trying to poke up through that and we'll just we'll let it happen not covering it all up but I want some of it just to be behind that to just break that just to break that plane And then one more trick with your paper towel. Just um, twist this thing up into a really, really, really tight taper. Really tight. You wanna, we're gonna aggressively smack the canvas with it. The bottom of the canvas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, detail foliage Gonna look like twigs and weeds. Now, again, this works best if you have a light canvas underneath where the canvas can come kind of come show through. Down here, we had a little bit lighter, but this on here was black. So I don't know exactly how well this is going to work, but it should work well enough to help us add some detail. Part of what's going on is it's going to see your the tip of your towel get saturated with paint. So it allows you to transplant some of that. I think some of this down here is coming through a little bit better for you guys, but just let it happen. I mean, grasses they grow any which any which way. I think unless I decide to give us a glaze or something later on, I think we uh, we are in a really good spot. So, and that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, you can see it's, it's great to be able to reuse old works that you're not completely happy with. Uh, give new life to that canvas. Uh, there's certain ways you need to do it, so keep that in mind. Uh, don't apply acrylic straight to an oil painted surface. Make sure you apply the proper primer for that to cover up the old pieces. Uh, have fun, use sp spontaneous painting. Um, take a break as you're as it's coming along so that you can kind of reevaluate what you actually see like at the very beginning of this painting when I had just the white and the black uh, primer on there I really could have left it just the way that it was and it looked like a really nice abstract landscape painting um, but we made this out of it I'm pretty happy with it um, follow along uh, like subscribe to this channel and share it with uh, someone who you think can benefit from these fundamentals. You can find inspiration anywhere. Don't be afraid to look. I'll see you next time.